What's up, everybody? Chris Record here, hanging with Fabian Cordoba. He's going to be our special guest today. In fact, we might even have another special guest if we have time. Um, but we're going to talk to you in the 90-day challenge about a very, very cool case study on how Fabian was able to take a store, a Shopify store, and scale it up to $4,000 a day. Now, it didn't stop there, right? It was a journey to get to $4,000 a day, but then he was able to scale winning campaigns and instantly it shot from 4K a day to 40K a day, and it only took four days to get that kind of growth. So he's gonna tell the story about the journey of how he got started with Shopify, how he built the store up to about $4,000 a day, and then how he rapidly scaled it when he had a winner. And that's the thing, I wanted to bring him on because a lot of you are gonna, we're going through the build phase, the growth phase, and then the scale phase, of your store and a lot of you kind of like hitting your head against the wall going man this ad's working this ad isn't working and sometimes it's hard to have success well when you do have something that works and it's scalable instantly you might be able to 10x your income and it makes all these little losses and all these struggles seem just like nothing and that's exactly what happened with fabian he was able to 10x his daily revenue with his Shopify store from 4K to 40 days. And that happened in just a four day period. And so I think it's a fantastic story. Um, he literally just spoke uh, for our Ecom Power Sellers. We're here at the corporate headquarters, our campus in Scottsdale, Arizona for Techademics. And he spoke uh, to our audience that's actually next door, right behind this wall here. There's hundreds of entrepreneurs that are learning all about our Ecom Power Sellers program, our certified Power Sellers program where we teach people how to build, grow, and then flip e-commerce stores. We're here live. Fabian's topic was Facebook ads gone wild from 4K a day to 40K a day in sales. And he did that in four days. So. I asked, would you be willing to come out and share your testimonial, share with everybody a little bit about who you are, your story. Why don't we start with your story and why don't we start with, go back like a couple years ago sure. to however, whatever it was when you just got started and we'll go there. Well, <clears throat> I'm actually a pretty cool story because uh, I, well, I'm, first of all, I'm from Costa Rica uh, and I had zero, but zero, zero, zero background within technology, online sales, marketing. So for me, it was like literally um, changing my uh, weakness into my strength. So it was literally what I just did. Um, just uh, did whatever it took to be in this position. And, and that's literally just like stuck with it. <laughs> awesome. So when, when roughly did you get started with Shopify? When's like the, the first day or whatever that you recall opening up your Shopify store? My first Shopify store, I opened it in January 2016. January 2016, so fairly new. It's been about a year and a half, a little like a little less than a year and a half. Yeah, a little bumps in the air. <laughs> so were you instantly successful or was there a learning curve? Of course, uh, I struggled um, at first. You know, nothing is easy. If, you, if it was easy, everyone would do it, mm -hmm. you know? But you know, uh, the main idea here, it's really getting that foundation for me was really important. So I took like almost a year to get all that foundation set. I was able to understand what did I have to do and what did I have to, what, I should do at, at first so it was like like building a house from scratch so if I, I am now feeling that I'm I have my foundation already set so I just can start you know scaling and, and it's not an easy trick like you need to know what you're doing because if not you're gonna lose a lot of money mm -hmm. so literally a lot of people give up in the beginning they don't understand you're saying that literally your first year was just like preparation almost it was learning yeah. curve like building a house so it wasn't until like this year where you really saw that explosive growth, but that full first year, while most people give up, you didn't give up. Was that because you just had a vision? Was that because you were motivated? Why didn't you give up? Well, at that moment in my life, I was desperate. I was almost depressed. I was uh, stuck in an office working a nine to five. Sometimes it was, I was working more than, more than 12 hours uh, for somebody else, uh, making a lot of money for them. That was a pretty cool thing at the time, but I was not getting any of that, any of that money in my pocket. So I was just like kind of upset. So. I just started looking for, for looking for ways to make money online and I just decided to stop building somebody else's dreams and mm. start building my own. That's awesome. Okay, so let's fast forward. So about a year of learning and hopefully if you guys are watching, hopefully you get inspired because so many people these days, you hear about somebody who joined and then they're brand new and they're like, I've only been doing this for five days and I just made $1,000, right? You, you sit there and you get frustrated, but yet your story was one of like persistence, perseverance, mm -hmm. Being willing to stick it out every single week, going on trainings, yeah. constantly like learning, growing, trying things out. But then 
2017 hits a year later and you start seeing success to your store. So tell us a little bit about the journey. I don't know if it was still your first store, if you started another one, but tell us a little bit about when you started seeing some pretty good success. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, I had a couple of stores. So this one, it's the one that I really just really wanted to go at it because at that time I was like, this is for me. Either I make it or either I not, but I'm going to make it anyway. Hmm. So for me, it was that or that because... You know, uh, I wasn't happy with my life and literally I'm so happy to be here because I was like this close, really, Chris, like this close of quitting. Hmm. And thank God I didn't do that because if not, I wouldn't be here talking to you guys also. That's awesome. You're this close to quitting. You persevered. You went from 4K a day to 40K a day, $40,000 a day. And so let's go and let's tell a story a little bit. Okay. So when did you have like your first like thousand dollar day like did it start progressively getting there tell take us back to the point mm -hmm. where you really started seeing success with this store and what was it that caused that big jump well uh first of all i started taking this as a serious business you know like this is not a, like a normal corner store you have to really focus and really not only build a product but try to build a brand something that it's not only like a dropship product but i try to focus uh, it's basically giving out value giving out a feeling giving guarantee that because Anyone can buy anyone's product, but why do people go to Apple, let's say, for example, because they get the best quality, the best price, and the best service. Mm -hmm. When you go to an Apple store, you have an experience. So that's kind of what I try to do with my stores so I can stand out from the competition. So until I started like, getting that into my head, I just like, stood out from everyone else. So let's talk about that for a second. How important do you feel like branding and experience is with a store? And not only how important, but what kind of things can people do to increase the branding experience? Well, definitely providing a super great customer service. Like you have to be like compliant. You have to uh, be able to ship things on time. You have to give uh, super high quality products. You have to be able to provide value uh, through emails, uh, contests. So. Engaging with your audience and with your clients will allow you to not only be able to make money in the front end, but you will be able to make money in the back end because mm -hmm. you already have a customer list, a customer base that you can use for retargeting purposes. Got it. So it's not just what people see on a site, but it's what they experience when they engage with you. So when they order a product, when they inquire through support, or when you fulfill a product, all these extra things that you're giving them is experience. And you believe that's important because you want to rise out in this world where anybody can set up a store now and anybody can drop ship. You're looking to rise above everybody else yeah. and have a bigger brand. Yeah, definitely. You know, like this sort of characteristics, it's what, what I try to, to see with big brands. You know, I, if I want to be a big brand, I at least try to replicate what big brands do, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so customer experience, branding, overall side experience. You model after big brands and say, even though I'm a small person, I can do that. Now, <clears throat> did you get started with drop shipping or print on demand? Like what... I know some people don't like to share the exact like products or exact certain mm -hmm. micro niche they're in, but as much as you're willing to share about what area you started to specialize in and what, what method did you use? Was it drop shipping? Was it print on demand? Yeah. I started first, um, you know, like drop shipping and I tested um, print on demand too, but I really hit it up with uh, drop shipping. You know, mm -hmm. I really noticed that I was able to have more profit margins with my, uh, every single product that I sold. So I really like stuck to it. Either way, I still run uh, print-on-demand campaigns and they are pretty profitable, but my main thing is dropshipping. Got it. So dropshipping, were you using AliExpress? Were you using, other, were you using United States wholesalers, China? What was Yeah, the... I was using AliExpress at first. You okay. know, like after I started growing, I was like looking for, uh, you know, companies that can help me improve my own business. Mm -hmm. So I now use companies such as $1 Fulfillment, etc. So it be, it's pretty nice so you can improve the the value of your company. Sure. It, it's one difference of taking 30 days to arrive than a week or less. Yeah, so you started with uh, drop shipping from China, even though it would take three or four weeks to arrive, you started there because there was no risk. You could try products, see if it worked, try products, see if it worked, but once you found winning products, yeah. one of the methods of scaling is to find a, a different type of fulfillment where you can get it to the customer in a week. Yeah. Now, but in the beginning, what's cool is that you didn't, you're just like me. You recognize it's in the beginning, it's more important for you to have the freedom mm -hmm. to kind of just go around and see what products sell. Once you find a product that sells, then you got to worry about fulfillment more, about getting yeah. buying, maybe getting inventory, maybe shipping to United States Warehouse, 100%. focusing on two-day shipping, seven-day shipping, something like that. Because then you're going to, you know, that's what people expect. Customers these days expect a product to arrive in a couple days. It's a little bit outside of the normal for a product to arrive in four weeks. Mm -hmm. But the reason we do it is because we need that freedom to see if the product sells in the first place. I can't just say like this coaster, I can't just bank on it and say, okay, this coaster is made of this amazing wood and it's made in marble, whatever it is. I can't just say, 
that this is going to sell. If yeah. I bulk order this to the United States warehouse, oh, I could get works, stuck yeah. with all this. But if I first let it drop ship from China, yeah, it'll take three to four weeks for it to show up. But if this thing starts selling, I've got a proof of the model. Oh, now yeah. I can yeah. safely invest. I'm Have you sure. found that that's kind of how the models work for you? Of course. You know, like, like I started with a $10,000 investment. That was the, the, all the money that I had. So I literally bootstrapped and uh, I made it work like that. And you know, the main idea here, Chris, what I believe it's super important for, for all the e-commerce uh, all the e -commerce per the people, it's like you have to improve every single day. Like if you find any flaw within your operation, mm -hmm. work on it immediately because if not, that flaw is going to turn into a huge problem. Got it. So what kind of flaws did you see in uh, your business? Shipping at first, you know, like uh, you have to be responsible. At first, I had a lot of uh, angry customers. So I really noticed that, okay, my customers are the way that I make my money. Why shouldn't I invest my, from my money to see what can I improve within my customer service because I just want to have my, all my, my customers happy or at least the, most of them, you know? Mm -hmm. You're always going to have angry customers. So shipping. Sure. So you, you wanted to basically get the products to the customers, get them to them good. So one of the ways you saw to improve that was if a product is selling, mm -hmm. instead of drop shipping it from China, what was your method? Were you ordering in bulk? Were you buying inventory? I, 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 I tried first bulk drop shipping, so that's a really cool method that I learned. So it's, uh, I don't know if you guys know what bulk drop shipping is, but it's basically, um, you know, like you have a full day of lists, so you grab the uh, of orders, so you make that specific list of orders and you ship it to your vendor, either if it's in China or elsewhere, so he can be able to send all that, load those products all at once instead of going to AliExpress and ordering one by one. Hmm. Okay, so you got bulk drop shipping. Mm -hmm. and then what's the other method? Ordering yourself, ordering in bulk, and then just ship it. And were you ordering in bulk to your own house? Were you ordering to a warehouse? Uh, I use fulfillment companies for this yep. in the U.S. Or if I was selling worldwide, I was using China, Chinese companies or in Europe, European companies. Got it. So keep in mind there. Uh, let's focus on what you just said. So if you were shipping to the U.S., what you were doing was if you had a hot selling product, you would mm -hmm. contact the vendor who might be in China. Maybe it's the vendor from AliExpress. Okay, maybe you start there. Maybe you find a comparable vendor. You found a vendor who maybe makes these, and maybe these things are selling for two dollars on AliExpress. But when you contact them, you can place a bulk order and get them a lot cheaper. Yeah. And you order these and you send them. You had them sent to a United States warehouse. The reason for that is that you didn't want to have five thousand of these sitting in your garage. Right? Yeah. And also, you don't live in the United States. Nope. You live in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, yes. So <clears throat> he's, got this, he's got the laptop lifestyle, right? He can live <laughs> anywhere in the world. So he doesn't necessarily want to be packing and shipping products all day. He wants to just be uh, playing with the money you get from the business. So what you do is you basically um, – he shipped, bought these in bulk, but only after he proved they sold. I'm, I'm using this as an example. I, I doubt this was his product, by the way. <laughs> this is just like a random coaster. Um, you basically buy thousands of units, whatever you get the best bulk deal, you buy these, ship them to United States Warehouse. That United States Warehouse then will fulfill on your behalf. It's still drop shipping. It's just drop shipping from United States Warehouse instead. And now it can get to the customer in like a week like or a less. Week, yeah. So that the, the, the customer experience. And also not only that, but you can work with that United States Warehouse and maybe you can put in an insert. Uh, you can put in like an insert. You can take something, have it like, so this comes with a, with a folded insert. Maybe this is like a little flyer that gives you uh, $10 off a t-shirt. Now he's selling a print-on-demand t-shirt with the same design on the coaster and it's $10 off. Normally $29.95, but with this it's only $19.95 for the t-shirt. Well, guess what? You're still making $10 profit. You can start to do that kind of co-branding and all that kind of stuff when you buy inventory, but you don't start buying inventory because that would be crazy. Yep. It would be crazy for me to go, okay, I've got 10 grand. I'm just going to go berserk and I'm going to go buy $10,000 worth of inventory. I don't even know how to sell yet. You know, so you have to, the reason a lot of people go, well, I don't know if I can get around a product taking three to four weeks to show up to a customer. You've got to get over it because you've got to practice somewhere. You, for you, it took a year, yep. right? So you've got to practice somewhere. You've got to learn the business somewhere. You've got to figure it out somewhere. You figure it out by drop shipping directly from China to your customer. Yes, the customer experience is not gonna be that amazing, but your risk is, is significantly reduced. You're learning how to be able to sell at a profit. Once you figure that out, now you can take a calculated risk by buying inventory. And you can either buy the inventory and actually set, have it all sent to a fulfillment center in China if you're shipping worldwide, or in the United States if you're shipping the US, or Canada if you're shipping to Canada, or whatever it is, you can find the right fulfillment center. And there's a lot of these, and we'll get to them. But as a beginner, I don't think it's that important to be buying inventory. Right now, you gotta figure out how to sell a widget at a profit. If you can figure out how to sell a widget at a profit, then 
you can ask yourself, does this have some legs on it? Meaning, can I, can I, can I make, potentially make a lot of money with this? And if so, contact the vendor and say, if I were to buy a thousand, what's the best price you can give me? And start doing some research. It's a fun side of the business. Everybody gets excited, but once you pull the trigger, you're on the hook for, you now have inventory, you have overhead. And that's exactly what you did, is that you, you gathered some money from some, re, some friends, families type, yeah. type stuff, grabbed some money and you bought inventory. Did that pay off or was that risky? Did you feel nervous about it? Every single day, <laughs> every single day. But you know, like hard work always pays off. And what I try to do is uh, minimize risks and I like to call them control risks. So I can be able to control how, mo how much money I'm spending or putting out and I know how much money I'm putting in. So with that relationship, I can understand how much money I can invest or how much growth potential I can have. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, so ca so controlled risks like calculated risk. So controlled risk is you weren't buying inventory until you had proven you could already sell the product. Yep. Right. So you took the model of let me get let me have a drop ship or ship it for a while, mm -hmm. but then as soon as you know you wanted to control the customer experience and you knew by bulk ordering you're taking on a bigger risk, but you knew you could serve your customers more. Yeah. Did that pay off? Was that profitable for you? Hundred percent. Okay. Hundred percent. Why? Because customers are not only purchasing once; they are continuously buying from me and that's awesome you know it's like when you go to your favorite store and you buy your uh, your favorite t-shirt or, or a nice pair of pants you won't only go for one pair of pants you at least go, go and buy two pants or three shirts or four shirts so that's the idea like giving out the customer experience so you can they, you know start profiting honestly because yeah you can be making money on the on the front end but the back end is when really the money is because if you have a really um, how do you, you call this um, really nice group of customers that love you, you're gonna be profiting like as many times as you want. Hmm. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. So let's, let's jump to, and by the way, I'm gonna give a heads up to you guys watching. Um, I'm on stage in the next room over in like 15 minutes. There's hundreds of people there. So at some point I'm gonna turn it over to Peter and then Peter, if there's time or it works well, you might wanna introduce our, our other mystery guest. Um, and maybe we'll do Q and A or whatever you guys want to do. I'll leave. You guys can do whatever. Turn it into a party. You guys can talk about whatever you want. Um, before I go though, uh, let's talk about this story of um, getting to 4K a day, and then scaling from 4K a day to 40K a day. So you've got a business going. You're starting to sell, and suddenly, what was it that got you to scale? To let's start by first. How did you scale to four thousand dollars a day? Were you primarily using Facebook ads? Was it one product? Was it a bunch of products? Tell us as much detail as you can about how you got to $4,000 a day. Then we'll talk about how you scale from there. Sure. Well, $4,000 a day was at first, uh, I always run several products, so I never stick to one because I want to have, let's say, products that are kind of profiting in the back end mm -hmm. so I can be able to know if they have uh, potential for scaling. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, I was, yeah, selling a lot. I was kind of breaking even. And actually, the day after... Uh, Let's say the seventeenth of March. Uh, the seventh of March, I was negative. Hmm. And the day after, I flipped it. I was positive the day after, and it was only because I I literally got out of my comfort zone. You know, the only way to improve in life is like if you really commit yourself of, of stepping outside of that box for a second, because that's where you fly. And that's literally what I did. I was scared of uh, testing. I was scared of doing things that I, that, I, that I was told to, but I was not doing it because of a fear thing or probably could be an ego thing too sometimes because mm -hmm. we're all human beings. Like we, we are filled with feelings and we are like, oh, like we're so like overwhelmed with our lives and everything. But you know, the moment that you, that you step out of your comfort zone, for me, at least for me, I start flying. So it was kind of like that. So <clears throat> you went from, you, you, you scaled and it was a little bit nervous, nerve wracking. You had to get out of your comfort zone. You were losing money sometimes, but then you cracked the code and you got to $4,000 a day. Yeah. Now, what's powerful about your story is that you went from 4,000 to 40,000 in, in a day in revenues. First of all, is, is, you guys, give, give them some props. If you're pretty excited, let us know. <laughs> How excited would you be to be able to have a single day of doing $40,000 in, in sales in a single day? That's pretty powerful, right? Um, a lot of people you know, generate 40,000 in a year. You know, we're talking in a single day. That's pretty astounding. So let them know in the comments. When it gets a chance to read the comments, I'm sure he'd love to read some of your feedback. But what did you do to get, like, you don't have to get into the exact specifics, and a lot of people here are beginners, but generally speaking, what did you do 
did like a light bulb go on and you're like, if I could do 4K, why don't I 10X it? Was it just as simple as like, do you just like listen to Grant Cardone and say, I'm going to 10X my sales revenue? And then, <laughs> how did you go from 4K to 40K a day? Well, I always wanted to, well, first of all, it was so funny because my first, let's see, because I am like an objective person. Like I set objectives for myself and I am going to stick to it until I do it. So my first, because I was like in 4K, so my next step was 10K. And I completely destroyed it. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So it was pretty funny. So the idea was, yeah, of course, you, you have to spend more money to make more money. So that's rule number one. And rule number two, think outside the box. If you're doing everything, then you're doing the same thing that everyone else is doing, you're going to be competing with, with everyone else. Hmm. So I'm trying to always think about niches, angles, uh, really outside of the box ideas so I can use it to leverage my pixel and my store and my brand. So I can position myself in that specific point for scaling. Got it. So do you have any, um, and I hate, like, when you guys know whenever I have guests, I don't want to, like, share all the details of their store and their strategy because then everybody will just compete with them. But on a general level, do you have anything that you would be willing to share about, like, what were some of those specific things that maybe you tweaked or changed or whatever? Yeah, just see that? Well, I, I do uh, manual bidding while scaling. And I not only stick to the U.S. Like I always look for diamonds all over the world. So for me, that is, uh, if you stick to only one country in, in the U.S., that's like the most competitive country there is. Everyone's testing the U.S. So I was like, hmm, let's try it to see what happens. And boom. okay, so a couple tips there. One was, well, first of all, let's let's take this down to beginner level. Remember, he was going from beginner to intermediate to advanced. So when you scale like that. So if your store right now is struggling to make $100 in sales, it's completely different advice for you. When you have a product that's selling well and you want to scale, one of the ways to scale is to scale out your audience like in the United States, find different markets that might want to do it. What he did was he said, let me try some other countries and shipping to other countries. Now when you ship to other countries, there's a, there's a lot more that goes into it. You got You have to... You know, like if you're using drop shipping, for example, then you've got and you're using ePacket, you gotta look to see if ePacket serves those countries. Or if you are selling to some countries, those countries might be higher chance of fraud, of fraudulent orders, things like that. There's there's potential risk when you start going too inter, too broad, too international. But like you said, there was diamonds in the rough out here. Mm -hmm. When you start experimenting with other countries, you started finding maybe countries that a lot of purchases are coming through, a lot of profit, less competition because all the competition is really here in the United States. Because the United States has lower fraud, more people with credit cards, more people are used to buying. You can generally sell for higher price points and stuff like that. Um, so that's uh, that's why. Did you just go to break? You just went to break. Okay. 15 minutes. Okay, I'll wrap up and Peter will take over here. So I'm on in 15 minutes, you guys, so I got to get over there and get my, uh, get my talk ready. <laughs> so... One tip for scaling you're willing to give people is that when you have a product that's actually selling, try going international with it. Try uh, now. Were you having your were you bulk ordering and having that warehouse ship internationally, or were you were you shipping? Were you having this stuff shipped to a warehouse in China? Were you bulk ordering to a warehouse in China and having them ship internationally? Yeah, like that. that like great. that. Okay. So when the time comes, you guys, we'll we'll once we get to a point where you guys are crushing out some sales. Uh, we'll have like another more advanced scaling webinar, but if, for those of you that think you're ready, what he was doing was he was finding a hot selling product, bulk ordering it to another uh, warehouse, a fulfillment center in China that could ship internationally, and then he was running Facebook ads to different countries to kind of look for those diamonds in the rough. Some countries work, some don't. You got to kind of feel it out. Once you find one, you're kind of like you're like, oh my god, no one's no one's targeting this. No, it's cheapest clicks ever. Number one, so your ad cost will go down and your ROI will go up. And not only that, it's going to give you more chances to get to know your market. You mm. know, like the, for me, data it's one of the most important things because if you don't know and understand how we interpret your data, your marketing, your audiences, you will be able to do great things. Awesome, but, yeah, awesome. So that's how we scaled from four thousand dollars a day to forty thousand dollars a day was um, doing that and obviously a lot more that went into it that he's not sharing right now because it's his own private business and we don't want to pick his brain too much. He also did make mention to, he, he did something called manual bidding. A lot of us, um, I'll be there one second, a lot of us, uh, uh, we do, we let Facebook optimize our ads. That's what you should do as a beginner. Once you get a little bit more advanced, you can turn over and do the manual bidding and that's something you played with. It's a little bit more risky, harder to understand. It's a little bit more of an advanced technique but he said that was another way that he learned how to be able to do it. And I think we could teach manual bidding at a point in the near future. I think right now it's probably not the best thing for everybody to learn. Um, why don't we have you stay here? Why don't I swap out with Peter? 
Peter, why don't you come on over? They're, they're, they're literally waving me over to go. Yeah. Um, you guys, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. They're going to hang with you for a little bit longer. Peter, just hit stop show when you're done. They're going to hang with you for a little bit longer if you guys are doing it. Um, and we've got Fabian Cordoba. And we also have another guest who's off screen. You guys can't see him right now. I'll let Peter introduce him. Um, but I'm going to go speak right now to our certified power sellers. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. Daily training, daily value here in the 90 Day Challenge. So with that being said, I'll pop out. You guys can take over. Uh, Peter, are you ready? Do you got the things you need? Okay, and if you guys have questions, um, we can't see them currently. What I'll do maybe is this. Let me see before I go. Let me see just in case you guys have them. If you have questions, we can do our best to try to answer them. I know they're calling me over there right now. Let's see if I pull up questions in the background. We'll find the post. And so if you guys have been asking questions, we haven't been able to see them yet. But we will be able to see them um, soon here in a second. All right, so there's our camera right here. And you'll be able to see questions here. Awesome. Okay. Um, let's start you off with this question. Um, or actually, you can kind of read through here. Sure. And see if there's, um, you know, like there's questions about ad copy. Okay, so let's start you with this one as we transition. Okay. So when you, when you target internationally, mm -hmm. are you writing your ad copy in those native languages or are you targeting people who speak English in other countries? I am targeting people. Uh, yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I honestly write all my ads in English. Um, most of the people in the world will understand English, so for me that's like universal language. And I basically leverage the fact that like a lot of people in the worldwide world speak in English. So don't worry, you don't have to change uh, any native uh, languages. So basically you just can go at it with English. Um, Amber Minsk. Um, let's say Instagram, no. How long is the shipping time from the Chinese warehouse? Well, that that's that that depends. Honestly, you have to contact your vendor to see how much time it will it take. But if you're using ePacket, you know how much how much time will it take from two to three weeks. We have another guest. What's here. going on, guys? <laughs> Welcome to, for those who are watching, and uh, love the comments. Just you guys give her a huge uh, you know digital round of applause if you're watching live with us. You know, share some comments if you've gotten value from today's training. Literally had to go from nothing, struggling it, figuring it out, Fabian, to $4,000 a day in his business, and then made those shifts, scaled up, thought outside the box, got outside of his comfort zone, and scaled those highs, you know, literally $40,000 per day in sales. And, you know, I'd always like to say, obviously, that's not all profit, right? You're running a legitimate business. Yeah. But here's the really cool thing about once you figure it out, because you've got the cost of the product, you've got the cost of shipping, you've got the cost of your ads, et cetera. But you know you have the ability to run a real legitimate business. You're building, like you said, you're building a brand. You're thinking like, okay, how does a billion dollar company do things, right? How do they build their business? How do they sell products? Why do they buy from X Y Z company versus exactly. another? And guys, we can do the same thing. You have the ability to build your own little mini brand uh, of something that can become very, very successful. People are buying products online, right? We're obviously shifting from the physical realm of traditional brick and mortar to the rise of e-commerce, people going online. And so I hope you're getting a lot of value. You know, if you're feeling frustrated, you know, that here's the biggest thing. Everyone feels frustrated. We all have those moments. The difference is between Fabian and maybe someone else that's not succeeding or hasn't succeeded is A, it might just be just time. You might be doing it a little bit longer. And B, is just being willing to go through the struggles and not quit. Be willing to continue to take massive action, to learn, to step outside the box, to continue to take action. So uh, it's great, Fabian. Thank you so much for being here, it's man. A pleasure. And guys, I've got a quick, quick guest before we end today's training. Quick special guest. So say bye to Fabian. Fabian, see yeah. you guys. It's Absolutely a pleasure. awesome. Appreciate first, that a lot, man. First time with us, probably not the last. <laughs> and uh, I want to introduce a friend uh, that I've actually known for a few years. Someone that I got to know uh, in this industry. Uh, has helped build successful companies. Imran Rahman, Imran, say hello to everyone here on the 90 Day Challenge. Hey, what's happening everyone? Really excited to be here at the Techademics uh, Global Headquarters and to be able to present to you live. And man, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me that you are absolutely excited listening to my partner Fabian's success story. You know, for that store to be less than a year old, right? I think that store is close to maybe 10 months old. And for them to be able to do what they did, which in the last, you know, just two months, that's 1.2 million in sales in March and April. So far this month, 100 and, um, over 120K in sales just this month, less than a year old store. Now tell me, tell me, how would you like to be there a year from now? And really that's what's possible. And you're totally connected to the right crew here. 
who can bring people like Fabian as well as other experts and share their own story with you so you can get those results as well. Yeah, awesome. Exactly. So, Ron, so for those of you that don't know, um, we actually met a few years ago. You were helping kind of the guy behind the guy behind the scenes. Of the kind of like you. Well. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, helping to run the business. And you actually shared, and Ron shared, for those of you that actually um, are watching, we've had simultaneously over the last three days. This is day three of our Certified Power Sellers Workshop where we're helping a select group of people um, basically, not only build and gross a uh, shop by stores, right, but flip them. So it's the business model of kind of like real estate, right? You have maybe cash flow properties you're, you're, you're keeping long term to, to, for cash flow, and then you have other properties that you're fixing and flipping. Well, in our world, the digital world, the e commerce world, there's a market for building these stores up, building these brands up, and then flipping them for cash. Right, kind of exiting that business and selling them to an investor. So we've been teaching, and you kind of taught. Obviously, we're not going to go into details right now, but literally just in a minute or two, sure. kind of share the high levels of Iman really sharing. How do you build the business if you're going to really take it serious? And as you get things going, maybe you get you know your point from now. What are this a month from now, five, six months from now, a year from now, and maybe you get to that point like Fabian, where you're doing a few thousand dollars a day in sales. You're figuring out, you're making money, but now you know how do you scale up? And not only just scale up, but from the context of what if you want to sell that business one day, yeah. right? Because it's one thing to build it to just continue to make money. It's another thing of if I'm going to sell that business to an investor or a business owner down the line, there are certain operations or certain manuals Absolutely. or certain processes and systems mm -hmm. that need to be in place. So you can just share a little bit. Just sure. Obviously, guys, this is probably, you know, if you're just getting started, you don't need to know about this too much, but have it as the back of your mind of, okay, maybe a, six months from now, a year from now this idea of building a store for the yeah. potential of selling it. Yeah, absolutely. So think about it this way, right? Um, there are little small mom and pop hamburger joints and you go there and the person's there and they sell you a hamburger and you buy it. Probably tastes really, really good and you enjoy it. And you're like, wow, great hamburger. And obviously, you know, they do, you know, whatever, 3000 a month in sales or whatever they do. And then you have this company called McDonald's, right? And McDonald's is not a food company. The way I look at them personally is they're a real estate and they are a systems company. And so now, obviously, there's a huge journey that takes place to go from a hamburger joint to get to McDonald's, but at least you guys can start thinking about that right from right. the get-go. You know, the purpose of these businesses and e-commerce stores is to have and experience freedom. And the way you experience freedom is by taking what you do in your business and documenting it so it is a process and a procedure and a system that can be duplicated by your virtual assistant team. So, you know, obviously the Tech Demics crew has been teaching you the three core VAs, right? And so imagine having all of kind of like your systems and training written down and documented so that your VAs can use that to run the day to day. And now you really can sell that business or travel, live the laptop lifestyle, not be the one who's sitting there like doing all yeah, the work. Yeah. You know, so let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second, right? So phase one is like, okay, you guys are figuring this out, you're making sales. Right? As you start making sales, you start getting a decent amount of sales, mm -hmm. one of the first things you're going to need to help with is this whole cost, product fulfillment, customer, customer mm -hmm. service, stuff like that. Well, virtual assistants, having a virtual assistant or a team of virtual assistants, people that are you're, you're paying a little bit of money to help you manage and operate, run the day-to-day -day operations of your business so mm -hmm. you can focus on the important income producing activity, which is the product research research, finding new hot products, doing the marketing, doing the advertising, things Absolutely. are gonna generate the revenues, right? Absolutely. Now, the next step, so now you do that. Well, the next step, you're saying, it's not just enough to, let's say, have the virtual assistants, but putting the documentation, the systems, the operations, so that that could be duplicated, Absolutely. so that whether you go wanna go from one virtual assistant to five or 10, mm -hmm. and or you want to sell that business down the line, well, there's gotta be documentations, mm -hmm. systems, and just like Imran said, McDonald's, you know, they're not in the, hamburger business, right? They're in the, the real estate business and then the, the, the so. systems business that franchises a system, yes. right? The reason why you can take a bunch of 16-year-olds, 18-year-olds exactly. and run a multi-million dollar business. Yeah, what other that, business do you know that where you have a, a teenagers running it? Effectively, that's because they have systems, they have operations, they have a process, right? So you can model that. You don't need to be a billion dollar company to do that, but you can learn and model. One of my mentors, a guy named Harv, Harv Ecker, learned a long time ago, you know, admire and model rich and successful people. Mm -hmm. Admire and model rich, rich and, and successful, successful companies. People. Right? How you can learn and model from them. And here's the thing you're going to go along your journey. You're going to make mistakes. Don't, uh, you know, you want to obviously avoid as many as possible, but realize this you're going to make mistakes. But it's, it's from okay. the mistakes is learning. 
course correcting, right? This idea of correcting and continuing so that when you get your first VA and you're not really sure, okay, well, you're going to kind of teach them what to do and how to do it. And you're not sure, or maybe you're not as efficient with the DA because mm-hmm. in my experience, you got to be, the more detailed you are, the very specific you are to your virtual assistants, right? The more specific you have that operations process down, whether it's product fulfillment or customer service, answering questions, et cetera, whatever it is that they're doing, the activities, yeah. Um, you know, when you're in your business, you're going to have that feel. You got to be able to transfer that knowledge, transfer that information. And, you know, then it's the next level of putting those systems in place so that yeah. you can really scale. And, and, and Peter, you touched on so many amazing things. And, and guys, this is a lot simpler, guys and gals. This is a lot simpler than you may think, right? So, of course, there's a lot of complexity that can go into it. But think about it if we were to do it simply this way. Like, say that you were launching a Facebook ads campaign and you just recorded a video saying, okay, I'm doing this. Like you're narrating yourself while you're screen capturing, right? And you're saying, okay, I'm going here. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. I'm getting the images here. I'm writing the copy this way. This is how I'm kind of like, you know, like grocery shopping before cooking the meals, right? Like you're doing the prep. Now, you know, now imagine now you're in your Shopify store and you're adding a product. You just record another micro video. Like this is how you go and you add the image and you write the stuff and then you hit publish. And like what you're doing, as you're doing your day-to-day work, like you can create these little videos, right? Right. And then hand these videos over to someone else, and that's like, how you create freedom. For instance, that. you could use this, a, a, a quick little tool, free tool like Jing, for example. Great Jing, tool. J-I-N-G, it is a quick screen capture. So imagine you do something. You, you do a little process, right? You do it every day, and it's it took you, you know, two, three, four, five minutes. Well, document that. What Ron's saying is you'll get to the point where you want to document these little things you're doing, these activities, so that someone else can do them Amen. for a few bucks an hour. Okay? So someone else can do that activity because you've documented it. Here's what I do. Here's the system. Here's the template. Here's what I do for this particular process, for writing the ad, for doing the research, for doing the, the order fulfillment, for sending the email to the customer, whatever it is that you take it a step further. You don't just do it yourself. You document it so then someone else can do it. Amen. Yeah. And you know, it's about freedom at the end of the day. Like it's awesome owning an asset and a business and like, yeah, absolutely. At the same time, if you're working there 14 hours a day, is that really a good business? That's kind of like a job. So like in the beginning, obviously you have to work the 14 hours a day because yeah. you won't be able to have the money to hire the team. Right. So that's the thing you gotta understand. <laughs> if you're, get, like just, you're new, getting started, under, embrace the it. struggle and the grind. You have to, you have you have to. to embrace no it. Way. There's no other, you, you, you no can't other avoid way. it. But here's the thing is you have the mindset, you're watching trainings like this so that you understand the next step yes. and the next journey, right? So it's as one of my buddies would always say, kind of the classic saying is chestnut checkers, right? You understand the several steps ahead, but guess what? You're gonna have to go through the journey of those several steps. Everyone Absolutely. goes through it in some way or another. It might look a little different, might sound a little different, but we're all going through that journey. The key is, those few steps ahead, understanding it, what is coming. So as you go from each phase of your business, right, this figuring out, generating your first sale, generating your first 10 sales, generating your first 100 sales. sales. Well, as you start doing that, maybe you can give a general range, sure, uh, Fabian's sure. even in the background, but sure, you know, sure. whether it's that 10 sales, maybe it's 100 sales, you get something that's selling, then it's like, okay, well, document, yeah. I'll begin to outsource more. Great question. So. Imagine that growth happens in ones and threes. So you go from one order to three orders, three order to 10 orders per day, 10 to 30, 30 to 100, 100 to 300, to then a thousand. So one, one and three kind of like has this really like powerful relationship. So you can look at those as like kind of like levels that you can go into. And so, you know, in the beginning, uh, man, like I think that really when you are ready to bring other people in is when you realize that you can take your time and by investing it, say, like in just Facebook ads, your store can make more money instead of you doing Facebook ads and you doing fulfillment and you doing customer service and you doing social media. But guess what? In the beginning, you have to do it. Like the org chart looks like this. You underneath, like another you with another you with another you with another you, right? But guess what? I want you to start thinking over time, how do you put those positions and people in place? Um, and Peter, just kind of as we wrap up and bring it yeah. together, um, you know, I would just like to say, uh, you know, I've been here with Fabian and we've had the opportunity to speak the Ecom Power Sellers event at Techademics. And man, they're just doing a phenomenal job. Like you guys are plugged into such an amazing community. I had a chance to, you know, have lunch with Kiss and hang out with them and just kind of pick his brain a little bit. And what a brilliant, brilliant leader that this community has. So you guys are really, really blessed then, you know, to have that. And so what I want you to realize from this, from this conversation, if you don't get anything else, just, just this one thing is that it is possible, right? But do not give up before you get the gold. When you're three feet from gold and you turn around 
you will not get the gold, right? So what if you even do? Spent a fir first year wax on, wax off, learning the basics. And then, you know, a year later, he is where he is. Now, is that going to happen to everyone? Probably not. But can, you know, how many people have the persistence to hang in something for a year, two years, three years, and then bam, yeah. that's where the growth happens. Exactly. I love what, what uh, Imran, kind of wrap up what you just said about the idea of being three feet from gold. And, you know, and the, if you haven't read the classic book, Think Grow Rich, it's, it's one of the classics, Napoleon Hill. He talks about this idea of like being three feet from gold, that struggle for a long time, right? Struggling, maybe you're broke, you're figuring things out and then he talked about when the avalanches of abundance would come it's like all of a sudden out of nowhere there's just this wave of abundance this wave so of success and it's like where the heck was all of, all those lean famine years right <laughs> and so that is yeah. you're going to experience that on some level and so mm -hmm. if you're in the the famine years so to speak right the grind the struggle trying to figure out understand that if you keep along the journey right one of one of my mentors tony robbins most of you guys know who that is tony robbins mm -hmm. is very famous for saying human beings they massively overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and they underestimate what they accomplish in a decade, yeah. right? A decade, yeah. So it's, and I can relate, you know, as a young entrepreneur, in the first several years, I struggled to make any really money. And then all of a sudden, I went from like nothing to having months, like 50 grand in a month at the age of like 22, 23 in my business. In the first, you know, four or five years, as an entrepreneur out of high school, I, I made like no money. Right, so I went from making no money to there was like this turning point to making some decent money, and then going from like five grand in a month to fifty grand in a month inside of twelve months if in my business. Given up, if you would have given up, if no, I would have stopped. Like I was like, tempted like, to literally, or if you would like done like the opportunity hopping thing, like let me start this store here, and then now let me like go do this other thing here, like now let me like if you would have yeah. you would have never gotten where you were. You have to focus going, until until, going, until you get something successful. Once you get something successful, it's like once you get one store up and running successful, you, you can, can dive into other no stores. You can go into other niches because you can you do you can create a system and a process like Imran's saying where you can duplicate that Absolutely. now you're just in a different market a different niche but you've Absolutely. acquired the skill sets because you've been willing to stay the course and you focus on it that's until it. you create that success so that's it so the last word if I had to say one um, persistence persistence perseverance patience and belief Believe to the point where if nobody else in the world believes you, that you look in the mirror and you tell yourself, I will do this. I will make it. I believe in myself. I believe my e-commerce store will be successful. I believe e-commerce will allow me to experience financial freedom and absolute freedom. And I love, Peter, that um, you and Chris and Jim and the rest of the team are um, not only living that, but, but sharing that vision yeah uh, and with the, with the group like, yeah absolutely that? man and i appreciate you being here and and okay. sharing uh you know it's you have to have that belief and that confidence in yourself and it, it you know it doesn't happen overnight but the more you can ingrain it and here's what i know from my experience is that it doesn't matter what the strategy is what the product is there's a million different yeah. ways to make millions of dollars. We're giving you free training and value and strategy and content every single day in the 90 day challenge for free, okay? But here's the thing, if you don't have the belief and the confidence, you're gonna quit and you're not gonna succeed. It's that yeah. simple. Because yeah. it's not, but it's not you. It's we are all wired this way as human beings. We have to reprogram our minds. Exactly we have to go through the inner journey of creating that confidence and then combine it. Here's the other thing. So it's not just woo-woo. It's combining it with the real world, day-to-day -day income producing activities, the strategies and the mechanics, right? So when you have the right mindset, the right belief system, and the right confidence, combined with applying the right mechanics and figuring it out over time, then you will succeed. It's not mm -hmm. if, it's just when and how much. That, okay, that, that really is, yeah. And thank you so much for the opportunity for having Fabian, us out, uh, Fabian and I out here. And man, we'd love to continue to share more with this community. Hang in there, guys. Keep going, Fabian, jump, jump on jump in. Jump in, say bye, guys. Say keep bye, going, guys. you can do this, just keep that? going. Believe in you. Crush All right, it. guys. Well, thank you so much for paying attention, showing up, and every single day we're live. We're watching on recording, obviously. Uh, this is just another day of our 90-day e-com challenge coming at you with massive, massive value. So if you liked it, uh, leave some comments. Let Imran, let Fabian know you guys enjoy their stuff, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care.